So in this video, I'll discuss acids and bases. So I'll discuss ko dito yung classifications and um, definitions ng acids and bases. Also, I'll discuss ko din yung mga calculations ng iba't ibang parameters on acid-base equilibria. Okay? So first, let's classify acids and bases based on the degree of their dissociation. So kapag ka strong acid or base, ibig sabihin, they completely dissociate in solution. Okay? So the reaction is usually represented by a single forward arrow. Kasi yung backward reaction o yung reformation ng acid or ng base ay hindi na halos nangyayari or hindi na sila significantly nangyayari. Okay? So, for example, we have the hydrochloric acid. Kapag inad nyo siya sa water, nagpaproduce siya ng hydronium cation and the chloride anion. So, yung backward reaction o yung reformation ng hydrochloric acid ay negligible na. Hindi na halos na reform yung ating uh, hydrochloric acid. Okay? So, ibig sabihin kung 1 molar yung hydrochloric acid natin sa solution, at equilibrium, 1 molar yung ating hydronium cation and 1 molar din yung ating chloride anion. Okay? Kasi yung ating hydrochloric acid ay strong acid. So, most commonly known strong acids and bases in AQ solution are as follows. So, for strong acids, we have the HCl or hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid or HBr, hydroiodic acid or HI, yung ating uh, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, uh, perchloric acid, and the chloric acid. Okay? So, kapag strong bases naman, ito yung mga common, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, and yung cesium hydroxide. So, sila yung mga alkali metal hydroxides. So, meron din tayong barium hydroxide. So, common din yan. Okay? So, for the next type, we have the weak acids and bases. So, these types of acids and bases only partially dissociate in solution. So, at equilibrium, may natitira pang acid or base dun sa inyong mixture. Okay? So, the reaction is usually represented by the equilibrium arrows or uh, arrows like this. Pwedeng double-sided arrows. Okay? So, pwede rin double-headed arrows. So, for example, we have the acetic acid. So, acetic acid mixes with water to form the acetate anion and the hydronium cation. So, kapag ka nagpaproduce siya ng hydronium, okay, ibig sabihin yung inyong species ay acidic. The acetic acid is acidic. Okay? So, therefore, yung equilibrium constant na gagamitin natin is yung acid dissociation constant. Okay? So, that's Ka. So, Ka is specific for acid dissociations. So, pwede rin natin gawin na ignore natin yung presence ng water. Okay? So, that's acetic acid producing acetate and H+. Pero, understood na nasa aqueous mixture sila kasi or nasa aqueous medium sila because of the aqueous states. Okay? So, ganito yung form ng kanilang Ka. Okay? So, next example, we have the sodium acetate. So, yung sodium acetate, completely nag-dissociate siya into sodium plus and the acetate anion. Kasi sodium acetate is a strong electrolyte. So, strong electrolytes are like strong acids. So, completely nag-dissociate yung salt sa uh, aqueous solution. Okay? So, yung inyong acetate anion, however, kapag nag-react siya sa water, partially nakoconvert siya sa acetic acid and the hydroxide anion. Since hydroxide ang napoform niya in solution, ibig sabihin yung inyong acetate ay basic. So, ang gagamitin nating equilibrium constant ay Kb. Okay? So, Kb is the base dissociation constant. Okay? So, in general, pwede tayong gumamit ng Ki. Okay? This is the ionization constant. Okay? So, yung ionization constant, general term lang siya for the uh, Ka and the Kb. Okay, so that's the equilibrium constant for acids and bases that are dissociating in solution. Okay? So for the next example, we have the ammonia. So yung ammonia, okay, nagpo-form siya ng equilibrium sa water to form the ammonium cation and the hydroxide anion. So ibig sabihin, basic din yung ating ammonia. So ito yung kanyang equilibrium constant or yung base dissociation constant. Okay? So uh, next we have the ammonium chloride. Okay? So yung ammonium chloride strong electrolyte din siya. So, ibig sabihin, siya ay uh, completely nag-dissociate to form the ammonium cation and the chloride anion. So, yung ammonium cation, further nagre-react siya sa water to form the ammonia and the hydronium cation. So, ibig sabihin, yung inyong ammonium cation ay acidic. So, therefore, ang gagamitin nating equilibrium constant ay Ka or acid dissociation constant. Okay? So, for the next example, we have the ammonia and the acetic acid. So, yung acetic acid, magre-react siya sa ammonia to form the acetate and the ammonium cation. So, yung ammonia nyo, naging ammonium cation. 
yung acetic acid nyo ay naging acetate. So, yung H+, plus, okay, was donated by acetic acid. So, yung acetic acid nyo, yung acid, yung inyong ammonia, yung base, okay, kasi nadagdagan siya ng H+. Plus. So, ito na ngayon yung inyong conjugate base, yung ammonium, or yung conjugate acid, I mean. Okay? And this is the conjugate base. Okay? So, yung KEQ ng reaction ay ganito. So, products over reactants. Okay? So, some notes. Carboxylic acids act as acids in aqueous solution because of the acidic hydrogen in the uh, carboxylic acid structure. So, yung amines naman, since basic yung kanilang uh, nitrogen doon sa group, okay, siya ay nag act as base in aqueous solution. So, kapag ka nakita kayo ng mga carboxylic acids, okay, in their form, sila ay nag act as acids. Pero yung carboxylates, so for example, yung um, sodium acetate kanina, okay, sila ay nag act as base. Yung amines, okay, so yung R, uh, NH2, okay, sila ay nag act as base. Pero yung ammonium, okay, ammonium salts, okay, sila ay nag act as acids. Okay? So now let's discuss the different definitions of acids and bases. Okay? So there are three different definitions of acids and bases. So for the first definition, we have the Arrhenius definition. So in Arrhenius definition, okay, an acid produces H plus or H3O plus in aqueous medium. Okay? So pag produce ka ng H plus or H3O plus, you are an Arrhenius acid. So dapat nasa aqueous medium yung inyong uh, tinetest na acid or base. So kapag ka nagpo-produce naman siya ng hydroxide in aqueous medium, Okay? That's an Arrhenius base. So, kapag bronsted lowry definition naman, ang bronsted lowry acid ay nagdodonate ng H+. Okay? So, ito ay regardless of what medium was used or what solvent was used. Okay? So, kapag ka base naman, siya ay nag-accept ng H+. So, that's a bronsted lowry definition. Yung Arrhenius nyo ay limited sa aqueous medium while yung bronsted lowry acid or base definition ay hindi limited sa kung ano yung solvent. So, for the Lewis definition, yung acid nyo ay uh, electron pair acceptor. Okay? So, siya yung nag-accept ng electron pair from a Lewis base. So, the Lewis base donates an electron pair to a Lewis acid. Okay? So, that's the different definitions of acids and bases. So, here we have some notes. So, acids and bases are not exclusive to one definition. So, depending on how you look at the system, may pwede kang gumamit ng more than one definition. So, an Arrhenius acid may also be a bronsted lowry acid, for example. So, yung acetic acid nyo, for example, since nagpaproduce siya ng H+, or H3O+, sa aqueous solution, siya ay Arrhenius acid. Pero, since nagdodonate siya ng H+, para makapagproduce siya ng H+, okay? So, that's also a property of a bronsted lowry acid. Okay? So, next, the Arrhenius definition is limited only to aqueous solutions. So, kapag hindi na aqueous yung solutions nyo, okay, hindi na pwedeng gamitin yung Arrhenius definition kasi limited lang siya sa aqueous system. Okay? So, for the bronsted lowry definition, there exists a conjugate relationship between its components. So, for example, we have here the acetic acid acetate equilibrium. So, yung acetic acid, siya yung nagdodonate ng H plus sa water. Okay? So, therefore, it is the bronsted lowry acid at yung water nyo yung bronsted lowry base. So, upon donating H plus, nagiging acetate siya. So, yung acetate, siya na yung conjugate base. Tapos, yung H2O nyo, since uh, nadagdagan siya ng H+, siya yung magiging conjugate acid. So, ang pinakaiba lang ng conjugate base at yung acid niya, okay, ay isang H+. So, lamang ng isang H+, yung acid, or yung bronsted lowry acid, compared to its conjugate base. Pareho lang sila ng structure. Yung acetic acid at yung acetate, pareho lang sila ng structure, except for that H+. Okay? So, that is the uh, bronsted lowry conjugate pair. So, yung acetate at acetic acid, bronsted lowry conjugate pair. Yung inyong water at yung H3O plus ay bronsted lowry conjugate pair din. Again, yung acetic acid, yung conjugate acid, at yung acetate, yung conjugate base. So, conjugate base yung acetate nyo kasi pwede rin siyang mag-accept ng H plus from H3O plus para maging acetic acid siya ulit. Okay? Ganon din sa water. So, yung H3O plus pwede siyang mag-donate ng H plus para maging water siya ulit. Okay? So, as I have said a while ago, the difference in the structure between the bronsted lowry conjugate pair should be exactly one H plus only. So, let's consider this example. So, this is the carbonic acid system. So, yung carbonic acid nyo, nag-dissociate siya to form the bicarbonate and H plus. Yung bicarbonate and H plus nyo, nag-form siya ng carbonate, tsaka a total of 2 H plus na dun sa system. 
Okay? So, yung carbonic acid and yung bicarbonate nyo, okay, sila ay pwedeng mag-form ng uh, conjugate pair. So, yung bronsted lowry conjugate pair. Kasi ang difference nila ay isang H plus lang. And yung carbonic acid nyo yung conjugate acid, yung bicarbonate nyo yung conjugate base. Dito naman sa case na to, okay, yung carbonate tsaka yung bicarbonate, yung bicarbonate yung conjugate acid, yung carbonate yung conjugate base. Okay? So, pwede rin sila mag-form ng bronsted lowry conjugate pair. Pero yung carbonic acid and yung carbonate, hindi sila pwede mag-form ng bronsted lowry conjugate pair. Kasi dalawang H plus yung kanilang difference. Okay? So, for the strength, okay, the strength of the bronsted lowry acid is inversely proportional to that of its conjugate base. So, the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. And ganun din kapag ka vice versa. So, the stronger base, weaker yung kanyang conjugate acid. So, for example, if we have the acetic acid, so yung CH3COOH, okay? And uh, yung kanyang conjugate base ay CH3COO-. If the acetic acid is a stronger acid, weaker base si acetic. So, doon naman sa ammonia, yung NH3, yung conjugate acid niya ay NH4+. So, kung stronger base si ammonia, weaker acid si ammonium cation. Okay? So, also, meron tayong example dito. Since HCl is a very strong acid, yung conjugate base niya na Cl- ay very weak base. Kaya sa reaction, hindi na bumabalik sa hydrochloric acid yung system mo. Essentially, nakoconvert na siya sa Cl- lahat. Okay? So, here we have an example. So, let's consider this equilibrium. Okay? So, yung ating uh, bicarbonate, nag-react siya sa water to produce the carbonic acid plus the hydroxide anion. So, ibig sabihin, yung inyong uh, bicarbonate dito ay nag-act as a bronsted lowry base. Okay? So, um, the bicarbonate is an arrhenius base because it produces uh, OH- in this AQ solution. Okay? Particular tayo sa system na to. So, bicarbonate is also a bronsted lowry base and the carbonic acid is its conjugate acid. Okay? So, water, in turn, is a bronsted lowry acid because it donated H plus to the bicarbonate, kaya siya naging carbonic acid. So, yung hydroxide anion is the conjugate base of water. Okay? So, for this next example, let's consider this equilibrium. Okay? So, yung AG plus or yung silver cation nyo, nag-react siya sa ammonia to form the amine silver complex or the monoamine silver complex. Okay? So, the ammonia here is the lowest base kasi siya yung electron pair donor dun sa reaction. And yung ating AG plus yung lowest acid kasi siya yung nag-accept ng electron pair from the ammonia. Okay? So, there are also different uh, types of acids based on the number of the H plus they can donate. Okay? So, kapag ka monoprotic acid, isa lang yung H plus na nadodonate niya doon sa system. So, for example, we have the acetic acid. Okay? Yung acetic acid, ito lang yung kanyang acidic hydrogen. So, yan lang yung kanyang madodonate doon sa kanyang structure. Hindi niya madodonate yung mga hydrogens dito kasi hindi naman sila acidic hydrogens. Okay? So, this acetic acid reacts with water to form the acetate plus the hydronium cation. So, this is the Ka of your acetic acid. Okay? So, next we have polyprotic acids. So, yung mga polyprotic acids, they are acids that can donate more than 1 H+. So, kapag ka dalawang H+, that is called a diprotic acid. So, ang example natin ng diprotic acid is the carbonic acid. So, carbonic acid can react with water to produce the bicarbonate. Yung bicarbonate, in turn, can also donate its H+, to produce the carbonate and ion. So, a total of 2 H+, yung pwedeng madonate from the carbonic acid. So, pwede natin isegregate yung kanyang mga equilibrium constants. So, for the first dissociation, that is called Ka1 or the first dissociation of the uh, carbonic acid. Okay? So, yung uh, Ka2 naman, that's the dissociation of the bicarbonate. So, that's the Ka2 of carbonic acid or the Ka of bicarbonate. Okay? So, finally, we have triprotic acids. So, kapag triprotic acids, hanggang tatlong H plus yung kanya nadodonate. Okay? So, example natin ay yung phosphoric acid. So, for the phosphoric acid, yung transformation from phosphoric acid to the dihydrogen phosphate is the Ka1. While yung uh, transformation from the dihydrogen phosphate to the monohydrogen phosphate ion is the Ka2 of the phosphoric acid. So, for the Ka3, that's from the monohydrogen phosphate to the phosphate anion. Okay? So, that's Ka3. So, tatlong subsequent donation ng H plus yung nangyari. From phosphoric acid to the phosphate anion. Okay? So, now let's proceed to the calculations of the different parameters in acid-base equilibria. But before that, 
introduce ko muna kayo dun sa P scale. Okay? So, the P scale is the negative decimal logarithm scale or the negative log scale. Okay? So, ina-apply natin to sa mga concentrations and sa mga uh, equilibrium constants. Okay? So, it increases the convenience of expressing those parameters kapag ka, uh, nilagay mo sila sa P scale. Okay? So, this is a more convenient scale used to describe concentrations and equilibrium constants. So, kapag kinonvert mo na sila, for example, yung Ka, kinonvert mo na sa PKA, mas madali na siyang i-express. Kasi usually, yung mga Ka's natin, may sobrang laking Ka, may sobrang liit na Ka, ganun din sa mga concentrations. So, imbes na nasa iba't iba silang magnitude, uh, mapupunta sila sa magkakalapit na scales lang. Okay? So, let me um, describe this by introducing some examples. So, example, calculate the pKa of acetic acid if its Ka is 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. So, ang gagawin natin, we will get the pKa. Okay? So, the pKa is just the negative log of your Ka, which is the negative log of 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. So, ang mangyari, the pKa will become 4.757. Okay? So, para makonvert nyo yung uh, pKa to Ka, ang gagawin nyo lang, okay? So, Ka is equal to 10 to the negative pKa. Okay? So, 10 to the negative P nung kung ano man yung kinonvert nyo sa P scale. Okay? So, uh, for example, dito naman, calculate the pH if uh, the concentration of H plus is 1 times 10 to the negative 5. Tapos kapag ka naman 2.25 times 10 to the negative 8 molar yung ating uh, H plus concentration. Okay? So, for letter A, we will get the pH or the power of hydrogen concentration. So, that's just the negative log of H plus. So, that's negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 5. That is 5. So, para bumalik yung um, value natin sa H plus concentration, so the H plus concentration is just 10 to the negative uh, pH. Okay? So, mangyayari dyan, magiging 10 to the negative 5.00, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay? So, kapag ka sa letter B naman, pH is equal to negative log H plus, that's the negative log of 2.25 times 10 to the negative 8, yan ay 7.648. So, para makonvert natin ulit siya to H+, ang gagawin lang natin, 10 to the negative 7.648, okay? Ang lalabas ay 2.25 times 10 to the negative 8, okay? So, i-introduce ko din kayo doon sa pH ng water, okay? So, ano ba ang pH ng pure water? So, at 25 degrees Celsius, water undergoes a self-dissociation process known as auto-ionization or autoprotolysis. This is an acid-base reaction between two water molecules. Okay? So, pwede natin siyang i-represent using this reaction. Yung water plus water produces H3O plus and yung OH minus na ions. Okay? So, pwede rin yung dissociation lang ng water. Okay? Dissociate yung water to produce the H plus and the OH minus. And these are the respective equilibrium constants. So, yung equilibrium constants, we know that as the KW. Okay, or the dissociation constant of water at 25 degrees Celsius. So, the KEQ of this autoprotolysis is 1 times 10 to the negative 40. So, if we use the ice table, okay, so initially, water molecules lang yung present, tapos nag-dissociate yung water molecules through the acid-base reaction. Okay, so, kapag ka sinolve yung equation, okay, using this expression, Okay, so, yung 1 times 10 to the negative 14 will be equal to x squared, where x is the concentration of the H plus and the OH minus. Okay? So, kapag sinob yung equation, the H3O plus concentration is just equal to the OH minus concentration, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 7 molar. So, kapag kinuha nyo yung pH, okay, that's um, negative log of this value, okay? so, uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 7, okay, that's equal to 7.00. So, ito yung pH ng water. At yun din yung kanyang pOH. Okay? So, pOH is also 7.00. So, yun yung power ng hydrogen and power ng hydroxide sa pure water at 25 degrees Celsius. So, using this uh, knowledge, okay, the pH scale can be derived by getting the negative decimal logarithm of this equation. So, if we have the Kw, that's equal to the H plus concentration times the OH minus concentration. So, kapag kinuha natin yung negative log ng both sides, ganyan yung mangyayari. And we know that the log of the product of AB is just equal to log A plus log B. Okay? So, the pKw is equal to pH plus pOH because this uh, relationship um, is applied. Okay? So, ayan na yung magiging result. So, since pKw is equal to negative log kW, which is equal to 14, it means that the pH plus the pOH is always equal to 14 at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay? So, now, i-explore naman natin yung relationship between the dissociation constants of an acid and its conjugate base. So, ano bang relationship ng Ka at Kb ng isang acid at ang kanyang conjugate 
Okay? So, consider a bronsted lowry acid dissociation. So, for a generalized acid or weak acid HA, kapag nag-react siya sa water, magpaproduce siya ng A- na anion plus the H3O plus cation. So, ito yung Ka niya. Okay? So, Ka is equal to the concentration of A- times the concentration of H3O plus over the concentration of HA at equilibrium. So, consider din natin yung reaction of pure A- kapag A- lang yung introduce nyo sa solution. So, mangyayari, yung sodium A, kung ano man yung A na yan, magpaproduce siya ng A- at sodium plus. So, yung uh, NaA na to ay strong electrolyte. Okay? So, uh, completely nadidissolve siya sa in yung uh, system. So, yung A- minus mag act siya as base. So, mag-react siya sa water to produce the HA plus the OH-. minus. Okay? So, ito yung KB ngayon ng ating A-. minus. Okay? So, KB is equal to the HA concentration times the OH- minus concentration over the A- minus concentration at equilibrium. So, an interesting relationship between HA and A- minus arises. So, kapag uh, multiply natin yung KA at KB, ganito yung lalabas. Okay? So, ang mangyayari dyan, maka-cancel yung HA at maka-cancel yung A-. So, ang matitira ay yung H3O plus concentration times the OH- minus concentration which is equal to KW. So, ibig sabihin, KA times KB is just equal to KW which also means that the PKW is equal to PKA plus PKB. So, kapag kinuha nyo yung negative log ng KA at negative log ng KB, yun ay PKA and PKB respectively. At kapag inad nyo sila for any conjugate acid-base pair, okay, ang magiging sum nun ay 14. Okay? That's equal to the PKW or the uh, PKW or the KW of water. Okay? So, yung P-scale ng KW ng water. Okay? So, now, magagamit na natin yung mga relationships na na-derive natin kanina para makapag-solve tayo ng parameters sa mga acid-base equilibria. So, here we have an example. Okay? So, the Ka of acetic acid is 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. Calculate the pH and pOH of a 0 0.05 molar solution. Also, calculate the Kb of the conjugate base which is the acetate and ion. So, for the first step, ay stable muna. So, initially, meron tayong 0 0.05 molar ng acetic acid sa solution. Okay? So, hindi natin sinasama yung concentration ng water. So, upon changing, minus x yung ating concentration ng acetic acid. mag increase ng x molar yung concentrations ng acetate tsaka ng H3O+. So, at equilibrium, 0 0.05 molar minus x yung ating uh, acetic acid concentration, tapos X molars yung ating mga uh, acetate tsaka yung H3O plus concentrations. Okay? So, solving this equation, so, ito yung expression, that's the Ka of acetic acid, that's just equal to X squared over 0 0.05 molar minus X. So, upon solving X, we will get the value 9.267 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Okay? So, pwede na natin kunin yung pH. So, pH is just the negative log of this value, we will get 3.03. Okay? So, para makuha natin yung pOH, ima-minus lang natin yung 3.03 .03 from the 14. Okay? Kasi, di ba, pH plus pOH is equal to 40. So, dito na-derive yung pOH. So, 14 minus 3.03, .03, we will get 10.97 for the pOH. So, for the Kb, ang gagawin lang natin, meron tayong Ka. So, since Kw, okay, so, susulat ko siya sa right side, Kw is equal to Ka, Kb. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, KB is just KW over KA. So, that's 1 times 10 to the negative 14 over 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. We will get 5.71 times 10 to the negative 10 for the KB of the acetate and ion. Okay? So, for the next example, a 0 0.75 molar sodium acetate was prepared. Calculate the OH- minus concentration, pOH, pH, and the H plus concentration of the mixture. So, the Ka of the acetic acid is 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. Since yung acetic acid at yung acetate natin ay conjugates, to be able to get the Kb of the acetate, you just need to divide the Kw over the Ka of acetic acid. So, that's 1 times 10 to the negative 14 over 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5 you will get 5.71 times 10 to the negative 10. So, ito yung gagamitin natin for this equilibrium. Okay? Kasi yung ating acetate ay magre-react sa water to produce the acetic acid plus the OH-. minus. Okay? So, yung ating acetate dito ay base. Mag-act as base in AQ solution. So, initially, we have 0 0.75 molar given by this. Okay? Tapos, um, upon change, mababawasan siya ng X molar at madadagdagan ng X molar yung ating acetic acid and yung OH-. minus. At equilibrium, we have 0 0.75 molar minus X ng acetate 
at x molar na acetic acid and OH minus. So the KB expression is given. So that's the acetic acid concentration times the OH minus concentration over the acetate concentration, which is equal to 5.71 times 10 to the negative 10. So that's equal to x squared over 0 0.75 minus x. So kapag sinuob niyo yung x, that's equal to the negative or the concentration of the hydroxide and ion. Okay? So that's 2.069 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. So yung POH, you just take the negative log of this concentration, you will get 4.684. So to get the pH, that's just 14 minus the 4.684, you will get 9.316 for the pH. So since pH is equal to negative log of H+, plus, the H plus concentration is just 10 to the negative pH. So to get the H plus concentration, that's 10 to the negative 9.316, you will get 4.832 times 10 to the negative 10 molar. Okay? So now let's discuss another parameter, the degree of dissociation or ionization or alpha. Okay? So for the reaction, uh, HA plus water produces A minus plus H3O plus, ibig sabihin yung ating HA ay acidic. Okay? The alpha here is the concentration of the dissociated HA over the initial concentration of your HA. Okay? So for the reaction naman, kapag ka basic naman, yung base na B, magre-react sa water to form the BH plus, the conjugate acid of B, Okay, plus the OH minus in solution. So the alpha is equal to the amount of B that was ionized to form BH okay, over the initial amount of B or the initial concentration of your B. Okay? So as an example, calculate the H plus concentration, pH, pOH, hydroxide concentration, and the degree of dissociation alpha of a 0.5 molar acetic acid solution. So the Ka of acetic acid is 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay, so I stable muna tayo. Initially, meron tayong 0.5 molar na acetic acid. So upon dissociation, minus x molar yung ating acetic acid, plus x molar yung acetate, tsaka yung H3O plus in solution. So at equilibrium, we have 0.5 molar minus x na acetic acid, at x molar na acetate, tsaka H3O plus. So the Ka is this. So Ka is equal to the acetate concentration times H3O plus concentration, over the acetic acid concentration. So that's just equal to x squared over 0 0.5 molar minus x. So solving for x, that's the H3O plus concentration, you have 2.949 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Okay? So to get the pH, you just have to take the negative log of that um, value. Makukuha nyo ay 2.53 for the pH of the solution. So the pOH is just equal to 14 minus 2.53, you'll get 11.47 for the pOH. So the OH minus concentration is just 10 to the negative pOH, which is equal to 3.388 times 10 to the negative 12 molar. So alpha is the amount of dissociated na acetic acid. So yung amount ng dissociated acetic acid is just the 2.949 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. So yung initial amount ng acetic acid is the 0 0.5 molar. So that's x over 0 0.5 molar, kasi x yung uh, sinob natin kanina. That's just 5.898 times 10 to the negative 3. So kapag uh, minultiply nyo to ng 100%, okay? So ibig sabihin, yung acetic acid solution nyo ay 0.5898% dissociated. Okay? So, 0.5898% yung acetic acid na nag-dissociate dun sa ating mixture. Okay? So, for this next example, a solution containing 0.20 molar of an unknown acid, HA, is 0.25% dissociated. So, calculate the concentration of H+, the pH, the Ka of HA, and the Kb of its conjugate base, which is the A minus anion. Okay? So, yung first step natin is to calculate for the alpha. So, to be able to do that, we need to divide the 0.25% by 100%. So, you'll get 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3. So, next is to calculate the alpha. So, alpha is equal to the amount of dissociated HA, which is uh, just the concentration of the H+, plus and the concentration of the A-. minus. Kasi yan yung nagdi-dissociate or yan yung products of dissociation ng HA natin. Okay? So, over the initial concentration of your HA. So, if you um, rearrange this equation, the amount of dissociated HA is just equal to alpha times the initial amount of your HA in the solution. So, the amount of the dissociated HA is just equal to the concentration of H plus and also equal to the con concentration of your um, an ion A minus, okay, so that's equal to 0 0.20 molar, that's given, times the alpha, which is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3. So you'll get 5 times 10 to the negative 4 molar, okay? 
So next, let's get the pH. So the pH is just the negative log of 5 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. This is the concentration of your H+. Plus. Yung nakuha natin from alpha, okay, and the initial concentration. So you'll get 3.301 as the pH. So we will use this concentration right here to determine the equilibrium amounts and to be able to determine the Ka as well. So, gagamitin natin ito sa ice table. Okay? Ito yung ice table. So, initially, meron tayong 0.20 molar ng HA. So, alam na natin kung ilan yung nabawas. That's 5 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. At kung ilan yung nadagdag sa H plus and yung A minus. So, nandito na ngayon yung mga equilibrium concentrations nila. Okay? So, for HA, we have 0.1995 molar. So, for H plus, that's 5 times 10 to the negative 4. And 5 times 10 to the negative 4, then si uh, A minus. So, if we calculate the Ka here, okay, Yan, makukuha natin yung um, value ng Ka just by um, substituting the values of your equilibrium concentrations. Okay? You can also get the Ka right here okay, from the alpha itself. So, that's equal to the concentration of H plus times concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. So, that's equal to alpha times the initial concentration of HA. Okay? So, ito yun. Yung nandito sa taas. Okay? Times alpha times concentration of um, HA initially. So, dalawa sila over the initial concentration of HA minus the alpha times concentration of HA. Okay? So, that's the same right here yung nasa taas. So, kapag ka, uh, sinimplify nyo yung equation na to, you'll get alpha squared times the initial concentration of HA over 1 minus alpha. So, from the initial concentration and the alpha, you can get the Ka of the acid. Okay? So, Ka is alpha squared times the initial concentration over 1 minus alpha. Okay? So, kapag ka sinubstitute nyo, okay, ito yung uh, Ka determination using alpha and the initial concentration. So, that's 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 okay, squared times the initial concentration ng 0.2 molar over 1 minus 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3. That's the alpha. Okay? So, makukuha nyo pa rin yung value ng Ka from alpha and the initial concentration. Okay? So, you may not need to do the ice table. So, for the pKa, kukunin nyo lang yung negative log ng Ka, you will get 5.902 for the pKa. So, the Kb of the conjugate base is just equal to Kw over Kb. Okay? So, that's 1 times 10 to the negative 14 over 1.253 times 10 to the negative 6. You will get 7.981 times 10 to the negative 9 for the Kb. So, the pKb is negative log of the Kb. Okay? You will get 8.098. Okay? So now, let's discuss buffers. Okay? So, in a solution, we can control the amount of the added acid, HA, and its conjugate A- to control the pH. Okay? So, kapag ka kasi acid lang yung nilagay mo sa water, nakadepende yung magiging pH ng solution doon sa Ka ng acid at doon sa concentration niya. Pero kapag ka naglagay ka rin ng conjugate base niya, which is the A-, okay? Pwede mo makontrol yung pH ng solution. Pwede mo ma-increase or ma-decrease yung uh, pH ng solution depende dun sa amount ng acid or ng base na i-add mo dun sa system. Okay? So, let's uh, derive an equation that can help us determine the amount of um, acid and its conjugate needed to be able to attain a certain level of pH doon sa inyong solution. Okay? So, start tayo doon sa reaction. So, yung HA nag-react sa water to produce the conjugate base A- plus yung H3O plus cation. So, this is the Ka that describes the ratio of the concentrations at equilibrium. So, ang gagawin lang natin, kukunin natin yung uh, pKa. So, kukunin natin yung negative log ng both sides. So, negative log Ka is just the pKa. So, that's equal to the negative log of A- minus concentration times H3O plus concentration over the HA concentration. So, ang gagawin natin, ibubukod natin yung negative log ng H3O plus. So, it's like doing this. So, log AB over C is equal to log a plus log B over C. Okay? So, ang ginawa natin, gano'n. Negative log ng concentration ng H3O plus minus log ng concentration ng A minus over the concentration of the HA. So, that's equal to the pH kasi yung negative log H3O plus, that's pH minus log of the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. So, that's pKa is equal to pH minus log of the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. So, kapag ka rearrange natin yung equation, you will get pH is equal to pKa plus log of the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. So, that's the henderson hasselbalch equation. So, we can um, manipulate these values to be able to attain a certain pH of the solution. Okay? 
So doon sa choice nyo ng components sa pag-build nyo or sa pag-create nyo ng buffer, the acid-base conjugate pair must be both weak enough to coexist significantly at equilibrium. Okay? Hindi kayo pwedeng gumamit ng strong acid or strong base as a part of the buffer kasi completely nagdi-dissociate yung mga yun. Okay? Hindi na siya mag exist at equilibrium. Okay? So dapat, yung gagamitin nyo ay weak acids tapos yung uh, conjugate nyo ay weak din para at equilibrium, nag exist sila pareho. Okay? So, as an example, yung acetic acid at sodium acetate, they can form a buffer solution kasi yung acetate at yung, yung acetic acid pareho silang weak tapos conjugate pair sila. Okay? Ang pinakaiba lang nila sa structure ay isang H+. Ganun din yung ammonia at yung ammonium chloride. Yung ammonium cation at yung ammonia, they are conjugate pair. Tapos isa lang yung H+, na difference nila and they are both weak in terms of their uh, strength of acidity and basicity. Yung sulfuric acid at yung uh, sodium bisulfate or yung bisulfate anion, they cannot form a buffer kasi sulfuric acid is very strong. At equilibrium, pu puro uh, bisulfate na lang yung mapuform nyo. Okay? So, uh, yung carbonic acid naman tsaka yung sodium carbonate hindi rin sila pwede mag-form ng buffer because dalawa yung difference nila sa H+. Hindi sila, bronzed lowry, conjugate pair. May mapuform ka ditong bicarbonate. Okay? So, the dominant buffer equilibrium depends on the pH of the buffer. Okay? So, yung isusulat yung buffer equilibrium depende yan sa pH. If the pH is less than 7, the acidic equilibrium dominates or yung dissociation ng acid or yung conjugate acid yung nagdo-dominate sa reaction. If the pH is less Greater than 7, the basic equilibrium dominates or yung uh, action ng inyong uh, conjugate base doon sa water to form the conjugate acid in OH-. Okay? Kasi mas maraming OH- kaysa H+, kapag ka pH is greater than 7. So, for example, for the acetate buffer. So, kapag ka pinasulat kayo ng dominant buffer equilibrium, tignan nyo muna yung pH. If the pH is less than 7, okay, this is the dominant buffer equilibrium. Kasi mas maraming H3O+, concentration kaysa sa OH- concentration. So, the dominant buffer equilibrium is the dissociation of the conjugate acid to form the, the conjugate base and yung H3O+. Okay? If the pH is greater than 7 naman, the dominant equilibrium is the formation of yung conjugate acid and yung hydroxide from the conjugate base action with water. Kasi mas maraming OH- kaysa dun sa H3O+, at equilibrium. Okay? So, buffers maintain the pH by neutralizing any small amount of added acid or base. So, ganyan yung pinaka-purpose ng buffer. Minimaintain niya yung pH ng inyong solution. So, kapag ka nag-add ka ng small amount ng acid or yung H+, ninyo-neutralize siya ng conjugate base nyo. Tapos, kapag nag-add ka naman ng hydroxide, nanon-neutralize siya ng conjugate acid. Kaya, importante na dapat nag exist yung conjugate acid at yung conjugate base dun sa system nyo at equilibrium. Okay? Para kapag ka nagkaroon ng fluctuation sa pH due to the addition of H+, or OH-, manyo neutralize siya no, uh, isa dun sa mga conjugate pair. Depende sa kung ano yung inad nyo. Okay? So, for example, buffering action of the acetate buffer. So, if a small amount of HCl is added, so HCl is an acid, so ang gagawin nung inyong acetate, okay, yung inyong conjugate base, magre-react siya dun sa H3O+, or dun sa H+, na added, para ma-form niya yung conjugate acid at ma-neutralize niya yung H3O+, by converting it to H2O. So, kapag ka small amount of base naman is added, yung conjugate acid naman, yung magre-react sa hydroxide para ma-form yung acetate at ma-neutralize yung hydroxide, maging water siya. Okay? So, mamimaintain nyo yung uh, status ng inyong uh, buffer or yung pH ng inyong buffer. Pero, hindi uh, namimaintain ng buffer yung pH kapag ka marami na yung ina-add yung acid or base kasi meron tayong tinatawag na buffer capacity. So, yung buffer capacity, okay, i-discuss nyo sa biochemistry, it is the maximum amount of acid or base that you can add to the buffer na hindi mababago yung kanyang pH. Okay? So, in this part, mag-discuss ako ng isang way kung paano mag-prepare ng isang buffer solution. Okay? So, in this example, let's prepare a 500 ml 0.5 molar acetate buffer with a pH of 4.5. So, the Ka of the acetic acid is 1.75 times 10 to the negative 5. So, reagents and glassware available. We have a 500 ml volumetric flask. So, dyan natin ihahalo yung ating buffer. We have a stock solution of 1 molar acetic acid. Okay? And we have uh, solid sodium acetate pellets. So, ang gagawin lang natin, titignan natin or uh, i-determine natin yung amount ng solid na kailangan natin by mass. Okay? So, kailangan natin ng mass nito. And kailangan natin ng volume ng stock solution. Okay? So, kapag pinaghalo natin yan at nag-add tayo ng distilled water for dilution, makakapag-prepare tayo ng buffer na may ganitong pH. Okay? So, syempre, yung unang part, uh, magka-calculate muna tayo ng mga required na concentrations. 
Okay, so let's calculate the amount of or yung concentration of acetic acid and acetate doon sa buffer. Kasi sa 0.5 molar, okay, yung 0.5 molar, that's equal to the concentration of the acetate plus the concentration of acetic acid. Okay? So, yan yung uh, 0.5 molar. So, ano yung concentration ng acetate at acetic acid doon sa 0.5 molar? Or ano yung contribution ng conjugates dyan sa concentration na yan? So, we will use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So, pH is equal to pKa plus log concentration of your acetate over the concentration of acetic acid. So, kapag uh, nirearrange natin, we will get this one. Okay? So, yung ratio ng concentrations ng acetate uh, to acetic acid is equal to 10 to the pH minus pKa. So, kapag sinubstitute natin yung values, we will get 10 to the 4.5 minus yung negative log ng Ka ng ating acetic acid. So, that's 10 to the 4.5 minus 4.757. You will get yung 0.5534. So, yung ratio na concentrations of the acetate and the acetic acid is 0.5534 over 1. Okay? So, yun yung parts or yun yung uh, ratio na concentrations nila. So, to be able to get the fractions, okay? So, kunyari sa fraction ng ating uh, acetate, you will have to divide yung 0.5534, which is this one, over the sum, 1 plus 0.5534 para makuha nyo yung fraction ng acetate doon sa concentration ng inyong buffer or, or yung contribution ng acetate doon sa acetate buffer concentration. So, doon naman sa acetic acid, okay? That's 1, yung nasa baba, over the sum, 1 plus 0.5534, that's 0.6437. So, yun na yung mga mole fractions ng ating acetate and acetic acid, okay? So, the next step is to determine the concentrations of the components, yung acetate tsaka yung acetic acid. So, para magawa nyo yun, imumultiply nyo lang yung concentration ng buffer, which is the 0.50 molar, okay? Yun yung concentration ng buffer, doon sa kanilang respective fractions, okay? So, for yung acetate, 0.3563, tapos 0.6437 naman doon sa acetic acid. So, for the concentration of the acetate component doon sa buffer, that's 0.17815. Doon naman sa acetic acid, the concentration of the acetic acid component is 0.32185 molar. Okay? So, for the next step, calculate the mass of the sodium acetate required. So, given tayo ng molar mass ng ating sodium acetate. So, kunin muna natin yung number of moles of the sodium acetate required. So, na-compute na natin yung concentration ng sodium acetate. So, ito na yun. So, 0 0.17815. So, yung volume ng ating buffer ay 500 ml. Okay? Or yung 0 0.5 liters. So, multiply lang natin yung dalawa. So, that's 0 0.17815 m molar times yung 0 0.5 liters. So, makuha natin ay 0 0.089075 moles. So, para makuha natin yung mass ng sodium acetate, imumultiply lang natin yung moles sa sodium acetate doon sa molar mass niya. So, that's 0 0.089075 moles times 82.034 grams per mole will get 7.307 grams of the sodium acetate. Okay? So, nakuha na natin yung mass na kailangan natin ng sodium acetate doon sa mixture. So, for the next step, let's calculate the volume of the acetic acid required. Okay? So, gano'ng karami yung acetic acid na kukunin natin doon sa stock solution? So, ang gagamitin natin ay yung C1V1 is equal to C2V2. Yung C1V1, yung C1 doon ay yung 1 molar acetic acid. That's the concentration of the stock. Yung V1, yan yung volume na kailangan natin kunin doon sa stock solution. Sa C2V2, yung C2 is yung concentration ng acetic acid doon sa buffer. That's the final concentration. Okay? Yan yung 0 0.32185 molar. Yan yung na-compute natin kanina. Yung V2, that's the volume of the buffer. Okay? So, kukunin natin yung V1. V1 is equal to C2V2 over C1. So, kapag sinubstitute niyo yung mga values, you'll get 0 0.32185 molar times 0 0.50 liters over 1 molar. Okay? So, mga cancel molar. Makukuha natin ay 0 0.161 liters or 161 ml of 1 molar acetic acid. So, ganito karaming um, acetic acid yung kailangan natin para sa ating buffer solution. Okay? So finally, kailangan na natin mag-formulate ng steps para mag-prepare ng buffer. So how do you prepare the buffer? So in a clean container, add a small amount of distilled water. So siguro mga 50 ml. So this is recommendatory lang. Ha? Pwede kayong mag-20 ml or 30 ml. Basta mahalo nyo yung sodium acetate. And then add 7.307 grams of the sodium acetate pellets. So paghahaluin nyo muna yung sodium acetate at yung distilled water. After nyan, mag-add kayo ng 50 ml distilled water. Mag-add pa kayo ulit. Okay? Tapos, i-add nyo na yung 161 ml na 1 molar acetic acid stock solution. Okay? So, napapaghalo nyo na yung uh, sodium acetate at yung acetic acid. Okay? Tapos, itatransfer nyo yung mixture dun sa volumetric flask. Kasi, hindi pa naman 500 ml yung total ng ating volume. Okay? Kailangan 500 ml yung maging total volume niya. 
So, mag a kayo ng distilled water until you reach the 500 ml mark. So, dun sa volumetric flask nyo, merong 500 ml mark doon. mag a kayo ng distilled water until the level of the water reaches that mark. Okay? So, kapag na-reach na nyo yung mark na yon, 500 ml na siya. So, you can shake well and serve. So, pwede nyo na siyang gamitin as buffer. So, after nyan, pwede nyo rin i-check yung pH. So, make sure na ang pH niya ay, may kita nyo dito, 4.5. Okay? 4.5 dapat yung pH ng ating buffer. So, uh, kung uh, yung calculations natin ay tama, which is um, verifiable naman, okay, 4.5 yung magiging pH ng ating buffer. Okay? So, this is my discussion on the acid-base equilibrium, yung iba't ibang parameters, definitions, and classifications, and yung ating discussion sa buffer. So, for the next uh, video, I'll discuss yung uh, solubility equilibria, yung formation constants, or yung uh, formation ng uh, complex uh, ions in solution. Okay? So, i-discuss ko din yung mga calculations and parameters on the solubility equilibria and yung ating uh, complex ion formation equilibria. So, mag-discuss din ako doon ng um, yung polyprotic acids, yung mga amphiprotic acids, and mga amphulets. Okay? So, see you next video.